And then one other very dramatic thing that our local troops are doing, um, and believe it or not, at the request of the White House, this is what's so interesting about living and working in Washington, D.C., the mayor called upon the Army National Guard to do several things, and the White House also called out the D.C. Air National Guard. Earlier today, an F-16 fighter aircraft from the 113th wing of the D.C. Air National Guard was actually called upon to intercept a second aircraft that was perceived to be yet another threat to the Pentagon. Um, they aren't giving any details as to exactly how they deterred that plane. Perhaps they'll be able to share that with us as the days go by, and it's not such a sensitive situation. But in any case, it is possible that there was a second aircraft that was headed toward the Pentagon, and because of the D.C. Air National Guard, that situation was taken the kind of world we would face if the people who bombed the death hall in Mosul or the people who did the bombing in Spain or the people who attacked the United States in New York shot down the plane over Pennsylvania and attacked the here at home. It's been just four years since a horrific crash on the red line claimed the lives of nine people. Tonight, many family members and friends gathered at a candlelight vigil to remember the lives of those killed. ABC 7's Ross Plater was there. Well, that vigil was held here on the New Hampshire Avenue Bridge, which overlooks the crash site. It is a place of healing for those families. You see they have left uh, some flowers and pictures of their loved ones. But as you'll also hear from them, four years later, their pain is still fresh. Kind of still sad. It's still there. Rush hour, June 22nd, 2009. Two red line metro trains collided near the Fort Totten stop. Nine people died. 80 were injured in the deadliest crash in Metro's history. These anniversaries have become a way to seek closure. So this is a healing process for me. It, it just helps to embrace the other families, to get to know what they're doing, what their struggles are. But closure isn't easy for Claire Worley. Her brother, Major General David Worley, and his wife Anne were headed home after volunteer training at Walter Reed to help wounded soldiers. Claire is frustrated. Metro still hasn't completed the safety recommendations from the NTSB. This is our nation capital and people from all over the country and all over the world come here and they need to come here and feel safe in getting on this transportation. Now Metro we're told still working on those recommendations including replacing some of those old rail cars. We're told work on that is to start sometime next year. In Northeast DC I'm Roz Plater, ABC 7 News.